This is an installation video of touch keys on a Native Instruments Complete Control S61. When first unboxing touch keys, it's best to lay out all of the components to see how the pieces fit together. The touch key 61 note kit will come with a 12 key section control board, a 24 key section, and a 25 key section labeled top C. Your kit will also include a mini USB control board. which connects to the top seat control board via the included ribbon cable. Gently open with your fingernail and fully insert the ribbon into the connector. To connect the controller boards together, repeat the same process. There are 61 touch key sensors which are labeled on the back side and inserted into the control boards chromatically, with exception to the high C, which is labeled with an apostrophe above the C, and is the last key to connect to the top C control board. Also in this installation, I will be installing the optional MIDI control board, which will allow you to control other MIDI devices without the need of a computer. Included in this kit is a switch for switching the MIDI output between pass-through mode and touch keys. To bring the USB out of the keyboard, I purchased a USB panel mount feed-through. You can use the included mini USB cable to connect this to the USB mini board. Or in my case, I purchased the shorter cable for a cleaner installation. Also included in the kit is a coupler and two ribbon cables in case you need to extend the length of the MIDI installation kit. Connect the MIDI board to the top C control board via the connector labeled PROG. Also included in the kit are extra ribbons and connectors, as well as extra double-sided tape for securing ribbon cables to keys. For this installation, you will need a utility knife for scoring the adhesive backs of the keys, a felt-tip pin for marking measurements, a screwdriver for opening the keyboard. A power drill for drilling the MIDI and USB ports. Strong scissors or snips for cutting the sharp key sensors to length. A surface cleaner for cleaning the key bit. A fine tooth hole saw bit for drilling MIDI and USB ports. Also a small standard drill bit for drilling any screw holes. To disassemble the keyboard, gently place the keyboard on its face. I removed the knobs so that they wouldn't get scratched up, but this is not a necessary step for disassembly. Unscrew the bottom casing from the keyboard. There will be three different size screws. It helps to keep them separated for putting the keyboard back together. Note that removing the sticker will void your warranty. Gently lift up to remove the back cover. The first thing to notice is that there is a ribbon cable connected from the keybed to the motherboard and that there is a cable tie on both ends holding the connectors securely. You will need to cut the cable tie that is attached to the motherboard, being careful not to cut the ribbon or the connector. Gently pull up to remove the ribbon cable from the connector. Locate the mod and pitch bin ribbon cable. You will disconnect the ribbon cable by gently wiggling the connector free from the rubber ceiling.
Remove the keybed from the cradle by lifting up on the braces of the back of the keyboard towards you. Place the keypad on a flat surface for cleaning. For the Control S61, there's no need to cut any of the natural keys down the size, but it helps to locate the high C and check the alignment of how the placement of the natural keys will be. Choose a sharp key as a guide to mark the other keys to be cut. To align the sharp keys, check that they are centered from side to side. The sensor should not extend past the front of the key. After marking your cut, carefully cut the sensor down to size, making sure not to cut past the connector. Attach pieces of double-sided adhesive to the backs of the black keys. You only need to score the adhesive backing if you plan on removing the sensors later. One of the most important things is to make sure that the ribbon cable is connected securely because it will be hard to remove the sensor after you've attached it. Remove the adhesive backing. Make sure that the sensor is centered and is not hanging over the front of the key. Continue this process, making sure that you align all of the keys to each other. Remove the backing from the double-sided tape. Use a pair of tweezers to bend down the stiff part of the cable. This will decrease the chance of a crease that might lead to unreliable connections. After you're finished with the sharp keys, do the same with the natural keys. Make sure that the key sensor is centered on the key and not touching any neighboring keys. You can leave a small amount of overhang off the front of the key. To attach the key ribbons to the control board, place the keyboard back into the chassis. Reconnect the key ribbons into the control board, making sure to place them into the appropriate connector. When you're finished, make sure that you check the control board ribbon cables as well. Carefully place the control boards in the space behind the keys. Reconnect the two ribbon cables of the Control 61. If you purchase the optional MIDI board, then pull up the top C control board and insert the ribbon into the prog connector. Remove the adhesive backing and secure the USB board to the control's keybed motherboard.
Find the location where you would like the USB connector to come out of the keyboard. Connect the USB coupler to the USB mini board. Measure the distance and placement of the USB coupler. Make sure that it does not come in contact with any of the control's circuit boards. To get your distances, measure from the existing MIDI port. You can remove the drill bit from the hole saw to find your center point. Carefully line up your drill bit with the hole that you had marked, making sure that you're free from any internal objects. Clean away the debris and check the fit of the USB coupler. Drill the appropriate size screw holes for the panel mount and tightly secure it to the control's body. If you purchased the optional MIDI board, find the location where you want it to be installed. Also check where you would like to install the switch. In this installation, I will be installing the switch into the pre-existing lock hole. It is necessary for me to drill the hole to a larger diameter. After drilling the hole, you can screw on the switch. To install the MIDI board, you could use a hole saw bit or a paddle bit. In this installation, I will use a paddle bit. Make sure that you align and center the holes. This is very important since they will be very close together. Optionally, I placed a rubber-coated adhesive barrier on the circuit board below, where I'm installing the MIDI board, making sure there is no connection between the leads. Before screwing in the MIDI board, it helps to plug in two MIDI cables, use a small drill bit to drill in the screw holes, Now connect the MIDI board to the control board top C via the ribbon cable. Reattach the bottom of the keyboard case, screwing in all the necessary screws. Clean the key surfaces. Replace knobs if removed during installation. Connect the TouchKeys USB port and the control USB to your computer and launch the TouchKeys software. If the status is not running, click Start. Make sure that the lowest octave is set to C1. TouchKeys can work in standalone mode or in combination with complete control. Set your MIDI input to complete control. When the keyboard display is shown, you can see that the sensors are active. Touch keys can set up to eight zones with different key ranges using different mappings.
When used in conjunction with the DAW on a Mac, you will set the MIDI output device to any virtual port. In pass-through mode, this mode sends all MIDI messages to a single channel, without regard for how messages for one note will affect the others. In monophonic mode, this mode sends MIDI messages to a single channel, but only enables the mappings for the most recently played note. In polyphonic mode, this mode allocates each note to its own MIDI channel. Pitch will and control messages will be sent to that channel, allowing each note to be independently controlled in several dimensions. Each zone can have multiple mappings. The default mapping is vibrato and pitch bend, which can be bypassed by enabling the bypass button. To add mappings, go to the add mapping menu. There is mappings for control, vibrato pitch bend, split key, multi-finger trigger, and release angle. You can also enable experimental mappings under the control menu, which will show onset angle and release angle under the add mapping menu. The basic control is using one finger on the X and Y axis, also for extended control. You can use surface area for up to three fingers of control. In future videos, I will be demonstrating how you can use touch keys in Ableton Live with virtual instruments such as Omnisphere and Contact and Machine.